Hello, it's Martin and as you can see behind me is a lovely blue BMW i3 and I'm back home and typically it's snowing slash raining. We often see people ask about how the i3 handles in snow because on paper it really doesn't look good. You've got a car which is lightweight, rear wheel drive and being electric you've got instant torque and of course region braking which can upset the car in certain situations. And while it's not perfect, in this video I will show you everything you need to know about driving the i3 in snowy conditions. This will be our test. I know it doesn't look like a steep hill but it's quite slippery because it's just above freezing. It's one degree Celsius. It means the snow is turning into a sludge and as you can see some people have been already struggling to get up. In terms of the car's setup we do have winter tires on and honestly if you're trying to drive in snow without winter tires which I know is quite common in the UK you should stop immediately it's a terrible idea but we have done it a little bit improperly so you know the saying do as I say not as I do the car is on the stock rims which are slightly wider in the rear so it's a staggered setup which means we had to go for wider rear winter tires officially you should go for Bridgestone Blizzaks all round using the 155 millimeter wide tire on a 5J wheel whereas here because this is a 5.5J on the rear we had to go for the Nankangs I believe these are not made anymore and it's not an official BMW recommended setup on the front it's the Bridgestones technically speaking obviously on the axle they are still the same but with i3s we have seen them freak out a little bit if you mix tires across the entire car so ideally go for the Bridgestones all around but with that out of the way let me show you how they do anyways as you saw the car is reporting plus two degrees outside at the moment and I will leave everything on the default settings just like you would the handbrake is on but I will flick it into drive we are in comfort mode and I will lightly press the accelerator pedal handbrake goes off I can feel a tiny bit of slip but no problem and I can feel that it is obviously working through the snow but it's no issue and let's see you see now it's definitely sliding about and even though I've got a little bit of a barrier to work through because they cleared the middle bit of the road from the snow it's all fine no problem what's the drama if I go back of course there's a massive water drop on the reversing camera so I can't quite see where I'm going do the old-fashioned way using the mirrors and I'm just using the region I haven't touched the brake pedal once but you can be nice and gentle with it and you see all nicely controlled there is no sliding, no drama, and if I want to stop, I gently stop using the brake pedal, handbrake on. And this is usually quite a difficult test, because obviously you're going uphill over a curb, and the main road has been cleared. There's almost like a barrier of snow I had to overcome. The traction control is quite aggressive in the i3, so you will see that's still on the default setting. So if I once again give it full power, you will see that it will kick in, and it really, really modulates and dials back the torque. But if I try that once again, you can go into the iDrive screen and under settings, you've got a traction control toggle and you can disable traction control. Now you will get a pop-up in the instrument cluster and a little traction off symbol. You still do get some degree of stability control, so it will not let you go completely crazy. And it really is only designed to let you start if you're stuck somewhere and you need to let the wheels slip. So if I do it now, full power, you see, it's still kind of modulating how much it gives me, but it lets me go, no problem. But I don't know whether it will be visible from the outside footage. It should have let the wheels slip a little bit more. Enough of that. I got a lot of system warnings, but it's basically all a result of a brake system warning, which I just think is because the snow got somewhere where it should not have. I just rebooted the car by turning it off and on again. And guess what? That sorted the issue. So let's try again. I will make it extra hard for it by trying to go right this way over the hill crest. And let's see. Traction control doing its thing. This is the tricky bit. And you see absolutely no problem. I will now drive around a little bit and I will show you all the other things because going down a hill is often the more difficult bit in winter and the i3 because it's not an all-wheel drive BMW it doesn't have hill descent control but you can see on the screen now we are just using region I'm still in the comfort mode 
and it's handling this very well. Obviously, some of you may say, oh, I'm only doing 10 kilometers per hour. Any car will do that. Well, yes, common sense still applies. You know, if you drive like a hooligan, of course, you will get yourself into a lot of trouble. But you see, even as you accelerate under power, it feels perfectly stable. And now this is all just a slush, so no big deal. And on the straight road, for example, if I floor it, it does pick up without any trouble going through these bends. Even when you kind of carry a little bit of speed through, it's no problem. If you are expecting a real wheel drive car to fully kind of drift all over the place, I'm afraid you will be a little bit disappointed with the i3. As you saw, the traction control and the stability control are really designed for stability and security. So even if you don't necessarily know what you are doing, they really do help you out a ton. And yeah, they've cleared this, they've put salt down here. So this is mostly just sludge, but we can try to go on a little loop. If you want to be really, really careful, you can always put the car into the Eco Pro mode, which softens the accelerator response, at which point you don't have to worry about the power coming on too suddenly, which would upset the car too much. It doesn't really affect the regenerative braking and there is no way to adjust that on the i3. So it's always in the strongest setting, but you don't have to be too worried because, for example, the moment you get a little bit of lateral slip, the region braking cuts out and the car will continue coasting for a second. So if it detects that it's about to get upset, instead of locking up the rear wheels, it will let them freewheel and regain control pop it back into comfort mode so I have full power available because I'm at this perpendicular intersection and I need to join this road with slightly faster traffic but you will see even on the sludge if I give it power I mean that's full throttle and you saw that the car still felt very stable and it exactly followed what I was doing with the steering wheel so uh, I don't want to say it's impossible to crash one in the snow but you really have to be quite stupid to crash one in the snow. I know if you're probably watching from any of the Scandinavian countries, you are laughing that this is absolutely nothing. And honestly, it really is. The i3 can definitely handle a lot more, but this is the most snow I've experienced in the last two years. So I thought I would get the cameras out to show you. So definitely make sure to hit the like button if you appreciate the content. And look what I discovered here. A lovely empty parking lot and I need to turn around what a coincidence so sorry officer my foot is just about to slip but you see this is this is basically almost full throttle and it's perfectly holding where you want to go you see the responsiveness of the steering the traction control and the stability control immediately kick in so go into the menu and dial back the traction control and you will now see the difference so I'm going quite slowly Regen break, but it still doesn't allow too much slip because the traction control setting only affects the traction control itself, not the stability control. And because of the way the i3 is designed, the moment you get a bit of side slip and with the region and everything, it will cut the power regardless. So you can have a little bit of fun, but you see the brakes are just immediately cutting in. So I'm afraid there is not much to it. And from a standing start where it's a bit more lenient, if I do full lock and full power, then you get a tiny bit more rotation. You need to be on the power all the time. As I said, there's not much. One last hack you can do is put the car into roller mode, which you 100% should not do on the road, which you do by pressing and holding the side button to go into the secret menu in the instrument cluster. So you press and hold for about 10 seconds. And then here is an option called Start Roller. Press and hold to confirm. Test mode, you get a lot of warnings on the screens because this is really what it is. It's meant to be used as a dyno mode. And you need to be really careful because you have no ABS, no stability, no traction control whatsoever. Also, word of warning, you don't get any region at all. So for example, now you see I've got steering lock on. And when I put power in, it starts to slide around a little bit. So I'm sure if you are brave and you really floor it and you have a lot more space than I have here, then it would do it. But just keep in mind, that's not what the i3 is designed for. And to drive the point home, look, if I turn left, even with full power, just incredibly stable, holds the track, 
doesn't do anything unexpected. A few days have passed, all the snow has melted, but let me actually conclude with some tips for driving the i3 in the snow. Firstly, let me reiterate again that you definitely want snow-rated tires. That doesn't necessarily mean winter tires, you can get all seasons which are snow-rated as well. But it's very easy to spot because you do usually have a little S on the sidewall denoting that. It's important because not only do you get big grooves which channel all the kind of wet, melted snow out of the way of the tire, but also little grooves inside of the tire surface itself. This country intuitively traps snow in because snow on snow is actually quite grippy so you get better traction than the tire trying to do all the job on its own. Next up based on the fact that I've shown you multiple comparisons with the traction control on and off if you want to have a quick way of enabling or disabling it without having to go into the menu every single time you can just highlight it in the settings and you can program it to one of the one through eight shortcut buttons so for example now i can just press and hold eight to save and that's all done so now regardless of where you are in the menu you can just single press number eight and it will bring you into the appropriate tab where it's just a single press of a button to toggle it on or off an important disclaimer with the traction control system on the i3 is that it's not only designed to keep you safe while you are driving but it's also designed to keep the vehicle safe so for example if you go into the roller mode because you're trying to have some fun where it takes all of the assistance off be very careful because if the motor is allowed to spin up really quickly when there is not enough traction on the rear axle and you suddenly hit a patch of road where there's good grip you will put a lot of pressure on the motor mounts and if you do this repeatedly it will snap those off so definitely be careful about that as I mentioned, the weather has improved, but if it's raining heavily or snowing, especially in the dark, the adaptive cruise control system, if your i3 is fitted with it, can occasionally freak out, but there is a way of deactivating it. So by default, it goes into the adaptive cruise control mode, but if you want to use adaptive cruise control, like it has dropped out now because we're driving directly into the sun, you can change from adaptive cruise to manual cruise by pressing and holding the distance button you get a distance control deactivated message in the dashboard and then you can use your cruise control as normal but it obviously will not slow down for the traffic ahead the other part of the driving assistance package is the collision avoidance assistant and that also occasionally freaks out and it will give you a warning or even slam on the brakes because it gets confused by the snow or heavy fog to deactivate it you can just press and hold that for a few seconds first go it goes into orange and lastly the halo around the car goes completely off and that means you're on your own but it will automatically restart on the next drive lastly a couple of practicalities as you probably know you can choose what the diamond button does in the iDrive system and I would recommend setting this to the cabin preconditioning in the winter which means if you press and hold it for a couple of seconds as long as you are within the range of the car the cabin air conditioning or heating will turn on for 30 minutes which is plenty of time to demist the windscreen get the frost off the entire vehicle which is particularly important on the i3 because it features frameless windows so when the seals are frosted over it doesn't make sense to pull on the handle trying to open the door again especially because on the i3 the door handles can pop off so just give it a couple of minutes the seal will defrost the window will drop down and the door will open without any trouble likewise the wing mirrors now i'm almost in the habit of when i lock the car i just press and hold the lock button either using the touch zone on the door handle or by using the lock button on the key fob itself and then the mirrors fold but in winter time the water can get into these joints and when it freezes over obviously the mirrors will have trouble folding open when you unlock the car so almost you have to reprogram yourself and just make sure that if it's freezing i would leave those folded out it's just less trouble in the long run that's about it i hopefully covered everything there is to know sorry that there wasn't much power sliding or drifting in the video but maybe in the hands of a professional driver who is a bit less of a wuss the i3 would do a little bit better but yeah if you found the video useful definitely hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more ev content which doesn't necessarily make it onto the wisely automotive channel again thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one